day has kind of got away from me. It's starting to get dark. So I hope my lighting is decent. Okay, one thing that I like to do that my mom always did when she made meatloaf, she would put potatoes and carrots around the meatloaf. It really makes for a nice meal all in one dish. And I'm hoping that it'll fit in this dish. I've never had my meatloaf in this dish before, but I wanted to use it because it was pretty. This is a little tip, a tip that I gave myself. In the past, when I would put potatoes and carrots around it, now, typically, typically I just get a regular bag of Yukon potatoes and I'll cut them up. I got these from Aldi's. Oh, well, it's all they had because I like to use Yukon Gold. What I used to do in the past, I would cut my potatoes up, put it around the meatloaf, put my carrots around the meatloaf, and I would cook that until the potatoes and carrots were fork tender. Well, I realized that I was overcooking my meatloaf just to get my vegetables done. So I didn't wanna do that. I mean, the meatloaf was still good, but it was just not as juicy as what it needed to be. What I do is I will boil my vegetables like part way, and I don't need to just overcook my meatloaf. I want to explain that. I just need to get that out of the way because that's a very important thing. And I really think you're going to like the idea. If you have not done this before, meatloaf, I really they get that flavor that's coming off of the meatloaf. And it's just, and it's just, there's your meal. You got your meat, you got your potatoes, you got your carrots, your vegetable. There you go. All you need some bread. There's my carrots and my potatoes. I'm gonna put just a little bit of salt in there. And while these are on the stove cooking, I'm just gonna mix up my meatloaf. This is two pounds of ground chuck, by the way. And I have it in this bowl because I had it in the, I pulled this out of the freezer. And you know how meat does when you bring it out of the freezer. Pull me some peppers out of the freezer. These peppers here that I have no idea what kind they are. I wanna do a couple of those just for color. Only reason I'm doing that is because I have them. So, now when I make meatloaf, I don't necessarily have like a recipe, but I will come up with measurements for y'all, just to give you an idea. Okay, when I cut my peppers, I like for them to be fine. I don't want big old chunks of peppers. And of course, if you have a food processor, you can uh, dice up your vegetables and that. Like uh, I just like to chop. I like to use a knife. It can be therapeutic sometimes to chop and use a knife, especially if you got some, <laughs> you know, like if you're a little frustrated. Yeah, you can just, you know, do that number. So, anyway, no, I'm all right, y'all. But yeah, it really can, actually. It can be therapeutic. Just like kneading dough, that can be very therapeutic. So, so is chopping. Oh, and while I'm thinking of it, if you don't care, turn on the, click the notification bell. I have never ever said that in any of my videos. And I don't know how to do the fancy stuff, you know, where they put it in the screen and it goes like that. I don't, guys, I sit down on the couch and I feel asleep. I did. Noah was asleep laying down on the couch and he had his feet all propped up on me and I fell right to sleep. Pretty small. I don't think I'm going to use this little pile right here because that's quite a bit of pepper there. And, you know, I don't want to put too much. I get this ground chuck from the meat market and their ground chuck, their meat in general, is very lean. And I like to get the ground chuck because... It has just the right amount of fat in it, you know, to give stuff that really good flavor. The ground beef that they have is even pretty lean. The ground round is just too lean, and I never get the ground round. I don't get the ground round for anything. Always ground chuck. I'm using two eggs. I just dump everything in the bowl. There. A cup of breadcrumbs. 
throw those in there. I love to use paprika. A little bit of basil. Dill seasoning. If you don't have dill seasoning, no problem. You don't have to have this. You can use like a beef bouillon replacement, such as beef better than bouillon. I like to use this for my salt because not only is it good, but it really helps to enhance the flavor. And if you don't have this kind, just use whatever kind of beef bouillon, bouillon that you have. A little bit of brown sugar. We'll put some garlic salt in there, pepper. I like to glove up when I'm doing my meatloaf. Let's see, I think that's everything. And now, just to mix it up. Just mix it till it's all combined. Okay, so how's that look? I don't put mine on a rack or anything like that. Shape it up. Shape it into a loaf. And there's your loaf. Close up. Let's get that over a little bit. I will put my potatoes and carrots all around that when they're ready. They're tender, but not quite as tender as I would like for them to be. I'm gonna let those cook, uh, I don't know, maybe about five more minutes. Where am I looking? At the ceiling. I'm gonna let those cook about five more minutes or so. And then we'll put them on our dish, and then the dish will be, well, we got, oh, I gotta make the topping, yes. I gotta make the topping for the meatloaf. Thanks for reminding me. Topping. I like to do tomato sauce. I like to have plenty of the red sauce on my meatloaf. Wanna add some ketchup? Dash of Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Stuff that lasts for years. It's a little bit of brown sugar in there and just a dash of cayenne. And that to me is perfect. There's my potatoes. They're tender, but they're not too tender. I'm gonna fish my potatoes and carrots out of here. Not only is like your whole meal, of course, unless you wanna add some stuff to it, in one dish, but it also looks pretty, I think. I think it looks nice. Okay, so see that there? So what I like to do whenever I bake my meatloaf, I like to go ahead and put some of the sauce on top of it and then reserve some of the sauce for later. When it gets close to being done, I'll take it back out and I'll put this, put more sauce on it and cook it uncovered because this here, I'm gonna cover it with some aluminum foil and then I will stick it, um, and then I'm gonna, you know, stick it in the oven covered. One more thing that I'm going to do to this meatloaf, bacon. And this will get that extra, extra little boost of flavor, of course. You know, bacon makes anything taste good, right? A few slices here. This is my bacon that I get from the meat market, and it is, oh, it is the best bacon. It's so good. Look at that, how nice that is. And it has the best flavor to it. So I'm just going to lay that bacon right on top of the meatloaf. 
And this is actually something that my niece did. Kelsey, the first time I ever had bacon on a meatloaf was, it was one that she had made and it was so good. And you just lay that right on top of there like that. I'm going to put a little pepper around here on my vegetables. And there it is. In the oven it goes. Meatloaf has been cooking for an hour, covered. And potatoes are tender, carrots are tender. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the rest of the sauce on it and then cook it the rest of the way uncovered. Since I'm working with one hand here, just gonna do this. See how it's bubbling there? I believe it is done. My meatloaf has rested for oh several minutes. And you can see all that juice in there. It's gonna be nice and juicy. We'll go ahead and cut it. This first piece is always a little tricky to get out of here. Tricky. Let me go ahead and just move some of these, put some of these potatoes on my plate. Plenty of tomato sauce there. And this is how I fix a juicy meatloaf. All I need now is some good biscuits or cornbread. You can just look at that and tell that it's juicy, it's tender. That is good. Carrot. I think I'll have me a little piece of bacon with one of my potatoes. Very, very good. Wow. Close call. Something from me. Hope you got something out of my video. You ought to try making your meatloaf this way. I really think you'll like it. It is very, very good. And make you some cornbread to go with this because you can just sop that cornbread down in that, down in that sauce, put some of that on your plate and that would be so good. Or a biscuit, a biscuit even. But cornbread, I mean, it really, it really soaks up the juice. Well, anyway, that is my video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, please. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all in my next video.